Welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. Hi everyone! In today's podcast episode, we're going to talk about how to believe in yourself again. And I will show you exactly how to give yourself permission to go after your goals, to take better care of yourself and live life being unapologetically you. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Simona, certified life coach and author of the book 111 Ways to Simplify Your Life. I make weekly podcast episodes on personal development, so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. Today's topic is a highly requested one, and I've decided to combine two of the most common questions I get and answer them in this podcast episode. The first one is, how can I believe in myself again and stop doubting myself? And the second one, how do I give myself permission to go after my goals and be unapologetically me? Now, these two questions may not seem correlated at first, but the truth is they have a lot in common. When you're doubting yourself for whatever reason, you're not showing up as your most authentic self. You're probably not giving yourself permission to dream big, you're keeping yourself in this small box of limitations you've been taught by society, or it's like you're waiting for someone else to tell you it's okay to unleash your creativity and step into your true potential. So let's first address the possible reasons for not believing in yourself at the moment. Self-doubt and lack of self-trust can happen for a variety of reasons. But in my coaching practice so far, I have seen these common reasons show up again and again. Low self-esteem, lack of healthy boundaries, and some sort of recent triggering stressful event, such as the death of a loved one, divorce, or losing your job. Now let's break down each one of them. Low self-esteem is a very broad topic that can stem from many different situations, such as childhood trauma, harsh inner critic, and lack of coping skills. You may have experienced events that led to you questioning every decision you make and not believing in your own abilities. If you've internalized the voice of one of your parents or what society tells you you should be, your inner critic, also known as your superego, is saying all of these nasty and helpful things on a daily basis. And you may lack the skills to combat these negative thoughts, which leads to even more anxiety. We'll talk more about how to deal with this later on in this episode. But for now, let's tackle the second reason for not believing in yourself. Lack of healthy boundaries. When you're codependent, you let other people's opinions of you matter more than your opinion of yourself. If you don't have healthy boundaries, you may find it difficult to stand up for yourself. And you may engage in people-pleasing for the sake of avoiding conflict. If you're constantly on the lookout for other people's reactions, that means you're not connected to your truth. You can't live life trying to please your partner, your boss, your friends, and believe in yourself at the same time. Establishing healthy boundaries begins with knowing how to say no when the situation calls for it. If you want more help with that and examples of what to say to protect your boundaries in different situations, watch my video on how to say no to people without feeling guilty after this one. I will link it below. Now let's go back to the third possible reason for not believing in yourself and that is processing an event that has happened fairly recently and influenced your core feeling of safety and security, such as the death of a loved one, divorce, losing your job, moving to a new country, etc. Why do all of these events shake our self-confidence and lead to feeling lost? It's very simple. One of our basic needs as human beings is to feel safe and secure. When you lose someone you love, or get cheated on, or get fired, you start questioning everything about yourself. You may internalize the event as deeply personal, and may have feelings of shame, self-doubt, and lack of confidence. Now that we've taken a look at the three most common reasons for not believing in yourself, let's address where giving yourself permission comes into the equation. When you don't believe that you're worthy of love, you're not giving yourself permission to be authentic with your partner and you don't know how to accept yourself or accept them for being exactly who they are. Let me give you one more example. When you don't believe you're worthy of making money, you're not giving yourself permission to scale your business. You're playing small and you're sabotaging your own success. Now let's get into my first tip on how to believe in yourself again and give yourself permission to achieve anything you want. Develop self-compassion. One of the reasons you're doubting your greatness is because you're too harsh on yourself. 
We briefly mentioned your inner critic a couple of minutes ago, and for a very good reason. Your inner critic is the voice you hear the most. For the longest time, I considered my thoughts to be true. But it's important to notice that they're just stories in your mind, not facts. It took me a lot of work to separate myself from my thoughts and see them as a silent observer. Meditation and journaling definitely helped a lot, but I'm going to share with you an even more powerful tool that I use with my clients called the Automatic Thought Record Tool. It's from Cognitive Behavioral Therapy and it's all about tracking your thoughts that lead to your emotions and the behaviors you engage in as a result of that. It helps you reframe your negative thoughts in time by filling out a simple PDF that you can print out and use every day. Download your free copy at bit.ly slash thought record tool. I will also leave a link in the description box below. As far as self-compassion goes, you can't be kind and compassionate with yourself if you identify with your thoughts. You need to understand that you're so much bigger than your thoughts and learn how to look at them in a more objective way first. So after downloading the automatic thought record tool, I suggest you listen to episode 109 next. I will also link it below. My second tip is to allow yourself to be vulnerable. When you're doubting every word you say or you're not keeping the promises you make to yourself, you're subconsciously telling yourself that you can't be trusted. Which means next time faced with an important decision, you will start thinking about all the worst case scenarios and you will end up doubting yourself again and beating yourself up as usual. By being vulnerable with yourself and others, you're giving yourself permission to be authentic. It's not easy to show your real self to the world because you may be afraid of getting hurt or betrayed. I get that. But the only way to believe in yourself again is to allow yourself to feel your feelings, express your creativity, and share your unique gifts with the world. Think about it. All of these people that you're hiding from don't really care about what you do as much as you think they do. They may even say a few bad things behind your back, but does it really matter? And when you look back 20 years from now, would these people be even part of your life? Don't let your self-doubt crush your dreams. Think big, act big, and give yourself permission to be exactly who you are. No matter what anyone thinks about you, stay in your own lane. You have no business proving yourself to anyone. Which leads me to my next tip. Practice mindfulness. One of the reasons you may not believe in yourself is because you're too invested in your storyline about who you are, what you're capable of, and who you're meant to be. Mindfulness is all about becoming aware of your surroundings and centering yourself into the present moment by observing everything that happens right here, right now, non-judgmentally. If you don't believe in yourself, that means that you're re-experiencing things that have happened in the past and you're letting them determine the way you feel about yourself, which can be detrimental to your self-esteem. Mindfulness allows you to drop the labels and take a look at reality in a more objective way. If you're new to mindfulness, here are a few practices you can try. The first one is the 54321 method. Here's what it is. You acknowledge five things you can see around you, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. The second mindfulness technique that I'm going to briefly mention is mindful walking. This is a super important one, especially now that we're spending almost all of our time at home. All you need to do is get up and walk around. Every time you take a step, count it. Concentrate on your steps. Notice how it feels to put your foot on the ground and then lift it again. Notice the surface you're walking on, the sensations you feel in your feet, and the weight of your body. Do this exercise for 5-10 to minutes daily and you will feel so much more relaxed and grounded. And the last mindfulness technique to get you out of your negative stories is doing a body scan. It's as simple as it sounds. All you need to do is close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and imagine laying on the beach or in another favorite spot. Imagine the warm sunlight going through your body, starting at the top of your head, moving down to your neck, your chest, your hands, your belly area, your legs, up until it reaches your feet. Now, the combination of these three tips, practicing self-compassion, allowing yourself to be vulnerable, and doing daily mindfulness exercises is a great start. But if you want sustainable results, you need to address the core wounds that led to your lack of self-confidence. And finally, step into your true power as a woman. That's exactly what I'm going to teach you in my signature online program for women. 
Enrollment opens in 2021. So if you want to be the first to know when it launches, sign up for the waitlist at coachsimona.com slash waitlist. This is going to be the first program that combines elements of cognitive behavioral therapy, confidence coaching, and a community of supportive women that are going through the same journey as you. So make sure to sign up for the waitlist at coachsimona.com slash waitlist. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please like it. And subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly podcast episodes. I'm sending you all my love, and I'll talk to you in the next one.